the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, amen. And what looked like the beginning of the summer, we had really a very cold winter, so bless the Lord. Uh, today, I just wanted to share something very interesting. If you love the Lord, and if you don't, just listen, because he's coming very soon, and he wants all of us to be with him. In the last two days, I had a, a friend who gave me a video um, like live and I was listening to it and I think the Christian are not doing really a good job that's why I'm going to preach about those things it was a rabbi from Israel in front of the wailing wall and he was making a debate with an Iranian convert to Christianity so he was back in time Muslim and he was converted to Christianity and the rabbi was using all the powerful muscle that he has and that new convert was trying to protect the faith. And uh, I just prayed for him that he will not be shaken into his faith. But the thing is, Christians do not read the Old Testament. And because they don't read the Old Testament, they have a big problem. They do not know. There is the beginning of the book and the back of the book. All the promises and the covenant are with Abraham in the Old Testament. And the fulfillment of this is the New Testament. So, we, and we are soaked in what we teach and what we know. So to, today, if I'm going to be preaching and if anyone will hear my preaching, I just ask the Christian to read the Old Testament because a lot of prophecy are in there and the fulfillment of them in New Testament. You cannot speak the book without reading its beginning. Like, like there is a story and you go in the middle of the story and, and read it till the end. And it, we do not know what happened in the beginning what the crisis was, what the things happened. So we really, it was very, very unequal. But the love that that convert Muslim had for that rabbi was incredible. And, and that rabbi was very attacking Christian face with an irony and, and lack of respect. And I don't wanna call his name, whatever, but we're gonna talk about this because Christians should be more trained in reading their Bible and knowing it the Bible say there is on the witness of two or three is the word of God established. If you want to you know, accuse someone of something, it, it should be witness on it. They will not do because you said. Everyone can say whatever. So the Bible is two or three people talking about the same thing on different time without having an internet connection. Now we do have the internet connection. We have the cross reference that you can read, read the Bible and see what is about from the beginning and how God spoke that one day and today he's fulfilling it. So I'm gonna encourage you to say this because it breaks my heart that the two so-called religious uh, leaders of the world and one of them is the Judaism that the Christian follow are so ignorant and so unknowledgeable of all what's happening and the way that they deny it is shameful. So here is what the rabbi denied for you to, to get the taste. He denied that the, the, the Messiah, their Messiah, that they are waiting for to come is divine. He's just a simple man. He's going to be a leader, political re leader, and, and he will build the temple. Exactly as the, the Bible say about the, the Antichrist when he will come, he will be a big dictator and he will build the temple. And he will ask uh, uh, worship for himself. So I don't know how they deny the divinity because I'm going to answer on behalf of that uh, uh, Christian, new Christian, uh, Irene, who couldn't defend himself because the Christian didn't really teach him well. So I'm going to answer for him. And then he denied the redemption. And I heard that was from a Muslim guy. You know, you cannot take the place of someone else. Jesus cannot take the place of your sin and die be, instead of you. And they have the redemption into the book. And if you don't have, we're going to speak about it. They deny the Trinity. And, uh, and they want them to return to Hashem, which is God, G, dash D. They call him Hashem. Hashem means the name. They don't dare calling the name of God. And God is Ahad is one. They deny, oh, and the guy, the rabbi was telling to the convert Christian, oh, drop the Trinity, you're too good. Now you're not anti-Semitic. Come and we'll help you. Very shameful. 
drop Jesus, drop what I said, uh, because I, I find the love of Jesus. That's why I can talk and I love a Jew. I didn't love the Jews. All the people from the uh, Muslim background, they hate the Jews, of course. They're, you know, they're training to their Quran to hate them and to kill them and look around every tree and whatever and kill them. So this is written into their book. So for that guy to come and say that Jesus touched my heart and because he touched me, I can stand and he hugged him with such love. So I pray that the love of God that he poured on that rabbi will touch him and change him because he cannot really stand before God. And the guy said to him, what if? The Messiah was Jesus. What would you do? What if the Messiah that waiting? And, and uh, something very strange that a friend of mine, the clinic or one of my customers gave me a calendar. These days are the calendar for the new year of the Jews. Of course, I didn't know. So happy new year for all the Jews uh, around the world. Um, and he gave me the, the calendar and I was looking at the beautiful picture in it, but something was very strange. There was a year 5,000, whatever, whatever. So it's not 2,000. They are counting the calendar from the beginning. And their Messiah didn't mark it yet. And there was a lot of mockery by a Muslim commentator. And he said, if you have into that time of life that people are wearing cars, electric cars and drone who can drive and, and without really human, and do this and that. And your king didn't come yet and he's gonna come with a donkey. How donkey are you? <laughs> he was very, very aggressive, you know, the commentator on that video. So they're waiting for their Messiah to come on a donkey according to the scripture. When he came 2000 years ago and they missed him. And then he criticized the birth of a version very hardly. The version birth. And he said, oh, it's not version. Uh, Batul is the word for one who never been touched by, and he said, and version, and he showed him around the scripture, that word is used all the time. And, and then he said, what is here? The sign that Isaiah 7 is talking about that the version will carry, will, will uh, have a baby. That's normal. Everyone, a, a young girl will have a baby. There is no sign in it. So they are waiting to the to the year to 2000 and whatever we are now, 23, where all girls can do whatever. They have boyfriends and they do not really uh, uh, protect their virginity anymore or whatever. And they want the sign that God will bring them the virgin birth. So that was just something very ridiculous, you know, because the truth is so simple and so clear. Well, in the time of Jesus and his birth, there was something valuable, the virginity of a girl. Not now. And riding a donkey on this age, what are you talking about? And the guy on the video was really criticizing. But today I'm going to answer, you know, the pride of this uh, uh, rabbi. And his name is Tovia Singer. He's very well known. And he has a past and he has a history. But he has no shame to attack the Christian faith with that unrespectful way and call Jesus names. <clears throat> but for me, I'm just gonna uh, tell you about uh, the forgiveness of sin for the Muslim people first. And this is from the Muslim uh, convert to Christianity. So this is their talk. And this is from the Quran itself. So you know those two major religion, how they solve the problem of sins. And in here, people, when they go in Mecca and turn around the picture in front of you seven times and touch it twice, and this is the word of Muhammad himself, they can be what you say here. Uh, his sins will be obliterated if, uh, uh, if they were equally to extreme of the form of an ocean. If you call the name of Allah a thousand times, whatever, your sins will be removed. And the other one, if you turn around the Kaaba, which is a black stone, symbol of uh, uh, atheism, you know, they, they bow to, uh, to uh, before uh, a rock, black rock, they don't know what it is. And they call the Christian are the idol worshippers, either the Jews or the Muslim. 
They turned around the Kaaba seven times and he said, whoever sees Kumbri seven times, it's like freeing a slave. So this is the forgiveness of sins in the Muslim Christ uh, religion, you know? A stone, and they call us, we are the idol worshipers. As for the rabbi, he said that um, uh, if I enter, uh, we can enter into a mosque, but we cannot enter in a, in, a, in a church. He was allowing in Indonesia people to come and enter into his uh, synagogue. The Muslim were coming there, and they go to the time of their prayer. Very, very, very good. But he said uh, we, that we can enter into the mosque. He was trying really to endorse the relationship between him and the Muslim world because of the Abrahamic religion, which will be signed or delivered this month in America. Netanyahu was saying that he will go next month for that special meeting for the religion of the Abrahamic religion. He's putting all the religion together. And of course, the problem is Jesus. So they have to take him out ridiculizing him and change the, the, the gospel by artificial intelligence, new gospel uh, like the China was doing. And I spoke about that earlier or a few times before. So here is that rabbi saying that he is allowed to, for himself to enter in a mosque because both of them, they believe in one, Ahad, Wahid, one, one God, Hashem, they call it Ism. But he cannot enter, if even there is no statues and whatever, like the Christian, if you go to a Protestant church, there is no statues, whatever. But he cannot enter there because they worship a human called Jesus. So this is idolatry for him. And he cannot be linked to the, an idolatry. Rabbi of 2003, after all what Jesus did for them, because, and, and, and the thing is, he was ridiculized uh, Paul, the apostle Paul. He said, who is Paul? I never heard about him. Arrogantly saying that. And then after that, quoting everything Paul was saying. What a shame. Christians do not read the Bible. They don't know the Old Testament. They do not know the word of God. And people like this, even a convert Muslim to Christianity, he cannot defend in front of one who really uh, a rabbi talking all the Bible things because Christian didn't teach him very well. So today I'm gonna answer for those horrible things that he said, uh, denying the Trinity, this, denying the divinity of the Messiah and, uh, and, and, and calling Jesus the son of a whore. At least Muslim respect Jesus and they believe in the birth of a virgin. Even this, he want to really to remove it. And it's written into their book that Jesus was, he learned because Jesus did a lot of miracles. No one can deny it. So into their book, you know, I don't know what they call that book, Midrash or whatever. It's written that Jesus went to Egypt and he learned <clears throat> witchcraft in Egypt. He was a baby there, hiding for a couple of years or three years, who knows. And he learned from the Egyptian, the art of opening the eyes of a blind. Very funny that a man who represents a very big religion with that level, standing in front of the wall, in uh, the willing wall, and in, insult their Messiah. It's not insulting our Jesus, because Jesus on the cross, he forgive everyone. But that rabbi so arrogant, he insult their Messiah, call him the son of a whore, and calling him a sorcerer after all the miracles Jesus did that it is written into their Torah that no one can perform those things except one who is divine. But let's st strike this one because this one, I'm going to get Bible verse from the Old Testament. So he know that the Christian know their Bible and he cannot get advantage of someone who's coming new to the faith. Oh, oh, you look to me like, yeah, you're not anti-Semitic anymore. Good, good, good. Just come. Drop the Trinity and drop Jesus. Drop these things and he call names. And he do not know that he was blaspheming to their own Messiah who came. And they're still waiting for him to come on a donkey. When no one is using donkeys now and be bores of a verse when there is no virginity respected on that uh, uh, word at all. So here is, you know, the, 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 the thing. This is from the book of Daniel, and I want you to listen to those words of God carefully. 
Daniel 7 and verse 3, he say, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the cloud of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. So this is here the scenario. The Ancient of Days is God Almighty, and there is one look like the Son of Man, and they're bringing him closer to God Almighty. It's a vision of Daniel 7. And there was given to him dominion, glory, and kingdom that all, A-L-L, this is how we spell it, all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom shall not be destroyed. So this is a prophecy from the Old Testament for that ignorant rabbi. That, this, that there is one like a son, like a, like, sorry, like a, a look like a man, and he's approaching God Almighty, has shame for them, he's approaching him over the cloud of heaven. So it's not scenario heal on earth, and he will be given dominion, which will be everlasting. I don't know if you don't have the book, I will send him a book. And I, before saying that, I tried to analyze and study this and see so the Hebraic book saying the same. Yes, it was saying the same. It's not the Christian to a book, the Bible, but the Torah. The Torah of, I mean, or the Tanakh, whatever they call it. I Google it and it was the same word, same meaning. A kingdom which shall not be destroyed, an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away. Everlasting. So this is here the story of. Uh, um, the beginning of the book. What is a similar story to the end of the book? Because it's going to make me, when I discover it today, I was just shaking from the glory of God who come upon me. And I want you to go into the book of Revelation. Because here God said to, uh, um, he said to Daniel, seal the book. Because it's not time for human to understand it now. They cannot understand it. It's higher than the level. So seal it. But later in time, when the Son of God, or God the Son, came on earth, Christ the Messiah, he came on earth, uh, 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 John was able to understand a little bit and have a bit of understanding of this prophecy. And he saw even the same revelation in a different format, even more details. But people cannot understand because they don't read. Christian, read the book from the beginning till the end. Stop cutting the Old Testament and stop cutting the, the, the beginning of the book because that's all what it has to be answered. And here is the story of the, the, the Lamb in Revelation 5. I saw the right hand of him. Him is uh, four, Chapter 4 is talking about the throne of God and all the angelic beings and the elders were bow, bowing before the Lord. But then here is... Um, uh, God Almighty sitting there, the ancient of days, God the eternal. I saw in the right hand of him that he sat, uh, sat on the throne a book. There was a book on his right hand, written within one, within and on the back side, sealed with seven seals. Seven seals were on that book, which is on the right hand of God. Very interesting. What happened then? And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy? I want you to listen to those words carefully. Who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seal thereof? Who's op who can dare to come and took that book from the right hand side, the hand of God Almighty, and, and uh, open the seals? And there is on the verse 3 of chapter 5 of Book of Revelation, no man, and I put like really a big line on it, no man. There is no man capable of opening that book, which is sealed by seven seals, either in heaven or in earth. <coughs> <coughs> neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look at it book. He cannot, no one can even look at him. So that's not on the level of humanity, that book of God. No humans can look at the book. They cannot open it and they cannot read it. No man. And I wept. John started to cry 
much because no man was found worthy to open or to read the book, neither to look at it. See how the level that we are far, far, far away from reaching the book, which can release us from all our iniquities and sin as a human being. And one of the elders says unto me, weep not, behold the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. So is he a lion? Yeah, I thought he's a lion. He's not a man because no man was able to do it. But the, the, the elder said to John that was a lion of the tribe of Judah. So that lion is coming from the tribe of Judah, uh, look like someone very strong. But then he said the root of David. So he is human and coming from the background of David. And he looked like a lion and coming from the tribe has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals. <clears throat> So in the beginning, he said there was no man able to look at the book, to approach the book, or to do anything about it, or to read it. But now we have a man, look like a lion, and he was able to come to look at the book, to read the book, and undo the seven seals. Well, listen to the rest of the story, which is even blow mind, mind blowing, you know? And I behold, beheld a law in the midst of the throne, and the four beasts and the middle of the elder stood a lamb. Wow. So he's not a lion anymore. He was just a lamb. So into the human level, there is no one capable of touching the book or reading it or look even at. But a lamb was. A lamb. A lamb. We're human. We're higher into glory. A lamb as it had been slain, so the lamb was slain, having seven holes and seven eyes. There is no such thing existing into the natural world. So this is something really over our understanding, which are, in the name of Jesus, be healed, be free. What are the seven eyes and the seven holes that are the seven spirit of God? Listen to the rest of the story because it's more amazing. Have an attention of what I the seven spirit of God sent forth into all the earth. So that lamb who was capable of undoing and reading the seal, the book of God, which is on his right hand, he is from the tribe of David, and he's like the lion and the root of David, and he look like a lamb who was slain, and he has sent the seven spirit of God around the world. That looked to me like the description of the Christian for Jesus. He was slain. He came with the spirit of God who went around the whole world. He's crying from the tribe of Judah. And he's a lion. So here is the description or the rest of the, the revelation of Daniel in the beginning was not completed. Well, he came and he was given dominion. But he didn't see how. John was describing us to us how. So he is a man, he's a lamb, and he's a lion. Description for the Christian, for our Messiah. Now problem is here that the, the people think that we don't have to have uh, pictures because picture is idolatry. And it's written into the book of God, of course. But I'm going to surprise you today because I want to surprise people who don't read the book. I want to surprise them. Into the wilderness, when, uh, when Moses took the people of God, Israelites, outside of Egypt, he, God Almighty was showing himself in a format that was never given to them before. So he was not really like a cow of the Egyptian gods or like the, uh, you know, this creature, whatever, Kejal, whatever, all those strange or serpent or whatever. None of this was the representation of God Almighty. So who was God on that time for them for 40 years? He was I am. I am who's I am. That's the name was given to uh, Moses to give the people of Israel. And the great I am, it means I am for you for everything you need or you want. So people of Israel, they saw.
they saw God walking before them as a column of light to give them light and direction. Where the light go, they follow. They see him as a cloud to cover them from the heat. They see him as the rock who is giving them the water. They saw him as the manna. In the... So God was everything for them in the format that they needed. He was, I am. I am your bread. I am your light. I am your uh, uh, shelter. He was taking whatever they need and he was for them. People didn't understand. The moment that Moses, you know, turned his back, they brought a, a, a cow and they started to worship it and make it uh, like look very, very precious, like the one who's in the land of Egypt. But God wanted to speak to people. And I'm going to give you the description of this. I, I mean, like probably you all know that Bible verse, but uh, yesterday I was falling into the O. It's from Colossians 1. That is Colossians 1 and that is Hebrew 1. But Colossians 1 and the verse 15, he say, who is the image? Jesus is the image. I want you to hear that, uh, Protestant people and whoever you are. He is the image of the invisible God. So God is not anymore uh, a, a cloud and he's not a wind and he's not a fire. God came as an image. He is the image of the invisible God. Because we couldn't comprehend him for the whole walk with Israel. They didn't understand. And every time they're falling in idolatry. And that uh, honorable rabbi, you know, uh, insulting the Christian in front of the wailing wall in Israel and saying that we are idol worshippers because we worship a human and because we have statues in our churches and all that. And he can go to the mosque and be with them because they... they Worship one God. Shame on you. He is the in, image of the invisible God. So we are allowed to have an image for God now. God does not have three heads. God has one head. He, we are on his likeness. He has two eyes, one nose, hair, exactly like us. Jesus took the image. I wanted to protest. Don't hear this. I give brochure and I pay thousands of dollars in them. People don't even look at it. But when they see the picture, and that's the picture of Jesus, they don't read the message. They are too busy. That word is too busy. But they are, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they understand that that was the Messiah that we're talking about. So for that rabbi, he is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of every creature. Colossians 1.15. Christian, read it. For by him were all things were created. So he is the creator. He is the image of God. Now we are allowed to have a picture of Jesus. He will, we will never have a, a person who can draw the beauty of God in a picture. He can, we cannot. But we can understand we cannot draw him as a lion or as a bird or as a, a, a lamb. He is human like I described into the previous revelation. And, and that's a heaven. So it's, and all things were created that are in heaven. They are in earth, visible and invisible, whether throne, dominion, or principalities, or power. So who is the created of all things? All things were created by him and for him. Who is that? The image of the invisible God. His name is Jesus. He's the Messiah that the Jews reject. What is common between the Muslim and the, 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 the uh, that rabbi? One thing. They have the anti-Christ spirit because everyone denied that Christ came in the flesh has an anti-Christ anti -Christ spirit. Neither nor uh, uh, approved that Jesus came in the flesh as the Messiah came in the flesh. And here the word of God is saying, he is the image of the invisible God. In him all things were created in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether thrown principality of powers in him. And for him, everything were created. Let us continue the beautiful, the beautiful symphony of Paul. Why he's saying, he is before all things. Before all things. So Christ, the born from a virgin, was not coming 2,000 years ago or 2,023 years ago. He was from the beginning. He was God into the beginning, into the, into the format of the sun. 
We're so ignorant. We don't teach people, oh, just come and join us and give us your donation. And we don't teach them because we do not know the Bible. Read the Bible, Christian, and shame on you. Shame on you. And a Muslim cannot can be intimidated for a rabbi in Jerusalem because we didn't teach him well. He said, I came because of the love of Jesus. Are not you happy? The rabbi said to him, yeah, you're not anti-Semitic anymore. But drop Trinity and drop Christ. You can do better, brother. You can do better. You missed your Messiah. You are celebrating the 5,000 whatever. And you're waiting for a Messiah to come in a donkey. Where well, there is no donkey here in this generation. We have cars. And we have drones. We have airplanes. Your Messiah will come on a donkey from a virgin. When virginity is not really respectful. They teach people on the, on the, oh, try him before you get in marriage. What's the birth of a virgin on this generation? How can this be a sign for your Messiah? Shame on you. Shame on you. I stand beside you. Uh, I don't know your name, but someone sent me the video from that Iranian convert. And I pray that your face will grow bigger. The revelation of God will come upon you even more. So he is before all things and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body. So he is the head and we are the body of the church. The beginning, the firstborn of the dead. So first one who's going to raise from the dead, and that in all things he might have the preeminence, for it is pleasing the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. All the fullness of God ahead is in that image of God called Jesus, the Messiah, rejected by his own people. Now the second one is a little bit more beautiful, but more theology in it. The first, as you open the book of Hebrew, this is why I'm telling you, they saw him as a wind. They saw him as a cloud. They see him as a manna. But now he's taking an image of God. And here Hebrew 1.1 1, 1 is saying, God into the previous time and in previous way spoke in time past to the Father by the prophet. So the way that God was speaking, he was, you know, the Holy Spirit come on a man and he write prophecy that he do not understand properly. It's written for a generation to come. So he wrote those words. God spoke through the prophet to our father. Has in these days spoken unto us by his son. By his son. So God get that image of the invisible God and make it visible. He's spoken unto us by his son who has appointed heir of all things. While I was just listening into that uh, whatever, uh, the, the other day, what, what is the God? And the, because people, I, I discovered that people do not know what is the meaning of son of God and all that. They think like, ah, I have a son and all those rubbish things created by lack of understanding. Well, in the time of Jesus, the head, the, the rabbi, or not the rabbi, they call them the head, um, um, the high priest was really going with Jesus in the trial, said, until when you're going to make us confused if you are the son of the Mes uh, the son of god or the son of the blessed he said it twice in two uh, uh, book two gospels they know that and he's, and they said to him we are not stoning you or want to kill you because of blasphemy that because you make yourself equal to god so they know on that time that calling someone son of God and God himself is the same. It's like the king and he has his prince. He knows that everything will go to that prince, the kingdom and everything. The ancient of days wait someone who is not a human, but has capability and ability more than a man because no man was up, uh, able to approach and even to look at this book. No one has the ability to be from the lineage of David, like a lion from the tribe of Judah, and be a lamb who is slain. And he has the spirit of the Lord on the seven of the all corners of the world. That's your Messiah. Has spoken unto us by his son, who has appointed here of all things and who had made 
the words, he made the word, we spoke about that in the previous word, one, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image is the brightness of the glory of God and the express, God express himself in an image, not in a manner this time, not in a cloud this time, not like a wind, not like earthquake as happened with the time of uh, uh, Elijah, no. His express image of his person. God know what he's doing. He put a picture for us to understand because we're so dumb. Humanity was not able to understand that the great I am is I am. If you need healing, I am your healer. If you're thirsty, I am the water who drink from me will never thirst. If you are hungry, I'm the bread who eat from me will never die. They couldn't understand that heavenly language. So God has to come to a level lower because he spoke to them by the prophets. He spoke to the father and they're falling again and again into ignorance and worshiping idols. And I'm going to show that Rabbi how much that his descendant is coming from a descendant. People who worship the idols all the time and calling the Christian worship of idols. Shame on you. Read your Torah first, Rabbi. Is the express image of his person. When you go and do a picture of the of the passport, they want you to be exact picture. You don't smile, you, don't, you just look straight. They want to measure everything about you. Not a picture which is, ah, uh, you, no. The express image of his person. It's not joke. I'm putting this, but then I read from your book. This is from the New Testament because we have to feed our children, the people who wanted to know Christ. But then as for you, it's up to you. You read the word of God. You missed your Messiah. You know, like someone who missed the train. Good luck. Or missed their aerop aeroplane. Done. You're going to stuck into your ignorance and drag some people with you to the hell because your Messiah came and you missed him. And you preach against him and calling him names. Shame on the religion that you Jews should be more respectful. Muslims are more respectful than them. The express uh, image of his person and the upholding of all things in, by the word of his power. And I preached about that before. The scientists don't know how the matter is holding itself. And the Bible is telling us that everything is held together by the word. Jesus, the word of God. He had by himself purged our sin. He purged our sin. Sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. For unto which all the angels uh, at any time said, uh, you are my son. He never said that to any of those angels this day. I begotten you. And again, uh, I will be to him a father and he shall be a son. It's like the king and have the, the prince. Everything will go to the prince. It's just a matter of time. Put it this way if you could not understand. Again, when he bring his first begotten into the word, he said, let all the angel worship him. Who can have a worship unless he's divine? Because Christian worship other people, human, and they pray for them. They make shameful on our divinity and humanity. We cannot worship the uh, humanity. All angels, he say, all angels will worship him. So he make him deity like him. He's the express image of his person. How, how ugly that we do not know the word of God. And all the angels, the son, he said, your throne, O God. So God the Father is talking to the God the Son and he's calling him, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. How amazing the description of the Father, which is the king talking to his prince, which is the God the Son and telling him, your throne is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Christ is righteous. I don't have time to finish this, but I, I have a lot of things to answer for that reply. Uh, and you have loved righteousness and hate iniquity. Therefore, God, even your God, have anointed you. 
anointed, he sent the Holy Spirit through him. This spirit is the word of God. He's the prince who will have a kingdom. And the angel will worship him and everyone will worship him on heaven and earth. It's written even, uh, I googled yesterday, uh, someone told me about the knee. It's only six verses written. One of them even in the book of Isaiah, that every knee has to bow for him. And of course, into the Christian faith is very elaborated, but even it's into the Old Testament. So that Messiah that they make him human, he's not divine because they're ignorant. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute and finish for another time. And he had laid the foundation of the earth. And then he sit on the right, my right hand until I make your enemy sit on your footstool. This is God the Father, the King, the Ancient of Days talking to God the Son, the Son of God. I'm just going to tell you. Um, Isaiah said, and he said, it is a light. Uh, I will make you as a light for the nations that my salvation may reach the end of the, world, the earth. And the rabbi said, he's talking about Israel. Israel, which have enmity around her in every corner of the world, doing all those horrible things, uh, even ch child sacrifices written into the, the, the Bible, the Torah. You know? They are talking, that will be the light. You will be the light into the millennium when you receive the Messiah, but not now. And Isaiah 49 is saying, uh, yeah, that he will be light. It is a light thing that you should be my servant. My servant is not Israel. To raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. So he will preserve the, the, the reserved of Israel. So it can't be Israel as a nation, Rabbi. I will also give you for a light to the Gentiles, to all nations of the world, that you may be my salvation until the end of the world. The salvation is only on Christ and Christ alone. And on that day, he said, Christian, um, uh, celebrate Hanukkah. I didn't know. Hanukkah is the, the feast of light. And it's into the, the John. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. When like he said, I am the bread coming from heaven. So he was the Hanukkah, he was the light. And the verse is from John 8, 12. He said, once again, Jesus spoke to the people and said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follow me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. You could be living, but you have no, you know, understanding. Those people who had the Messiah, they didn't receive him. They didn't understand him even with all the symbolism that they had into their religion. They didn't get it. Now I'm going to talk about God, uh, that the Messiah is divine, and I'm finished, and I'm going to continue the rest another time. The Messiah is divine. And this is from the Old Testament. This is from the Torah that they have. And I checked the book that they, what they say is what we have in the King James. And the book of Isaiah 9, 6, and Isaiah 7, 14, that there will be a son of a virgin and uh, she will give a birth and the son will be called Emmanuel. He debates that the, the virgin is a girl who was never touched by a man. Well, good for you. And he said, Batul. Batul is an Arabic and Hebrew word. Azra, it means like unmarried, untouched in sexual uh, uh, life. It's not age. Could be virgin till 40, 50, 60. But anyway, let's go for this, for that, and then I'll go. I give only three Bible verse, and we can find more. Uh, into the, the Bible verse, which make the, and the, the people who hate Trinity, which are the Jehovah Witness, the Mormons, the Seventh-day Adventists, the Jews, the Muslim, listen to this carefully. The anti-Trinitarian, the one who do not understand the plan of God. I show a little bit of the plan, that the Father, the Ancient of Days, approach by a man, but he's not really a man. He's more than a man. And he was able to unlock the seals. And he has to be slain. And we, he had to continue that plan of God. But this is simple for you to get the taste of what we're talking about. For unto us a child is born. I want you to say child. And to us a son. A son. Son.
son of God. Listen now. For unto us a child is born. Jesus is born of the Virgin Mary 2,023 years ago. But he was existing as the format of the son before the creation, as we read into the previous two verses. So he was born. A child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the name of the Holy Spirit, the Mighty God. That son will be called the Mighty God. Rabbi, Rabbi Tovi, what, what is the other name for you? Singer? The Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Huh? One Bible verse is not enough for you because on the witness of two or three of the Old Testament, we're going to witness to you so the Christians stop to be ignorant. And not only one Bible verse and that's it. Bring people to Christianity and everyone take them to any direction as their bad luck or good luck will take them. I read it again, Rabbi. And unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government, the rulership, the kingdom is upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. No one brings peace except Jesus when he comes in the millennium. And they're blaming that Jesus, they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah because when he came, there was no peace in there in his time. Well, he will bring the peace in time. He's waiting for you because you have heart and heart and he still loves you. He still loves the Jewish people and he wants them to, to, to acknowledge him. But listen to the other one. Jeremiah now, Jeremiah 23. They talk about Isaiah that he's a small prophet because a lot of things is against what they believe. Of course, the Isaiah 53, they cut it from their words. And they put curse. If one read that uh, chapter about the Messiah suffering, and they say, oh, it's Israel. The servant is Israel who rejected. They rejected him. It's written in it. Anyway, let's go for the divinity now. Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6. Behold, the day come, say the Lord, that I will raise unto David. So he's coming from David's bloodline. A righteous branch, and he called him the branch in many Bible verses. The branch, and, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the air, in the earth. So Jesus will come and be the righteous king, and he will rule on earth. And in his day, Judah shall be saved. It means like your people are not saved. Read the, 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 the proper uh, word of God, which is from your Torah, and understand, Judah is not saved. But when the king will come, they will be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name. Hereby we shall be called him the Lord our righteousness. The Lord our righteousness, he will be coming as a human. The king who will rule on earth, that's very strange. Because the Lord, my righteousness, is a name. Go. go. Righteousness is Jesus. He's the righteous man only who ever touched this earth. And only him he was able to touch the book. So that name is for God. God is righteous. So the God Jesus, that we call him the Lord, he will have a new name that we do not know. The name of Jesus yet to come into the millennium called the Lord, our righteousness. He is the righteous branch, the king that shall reign and prosper and execute judgment in the earth. So he's not here talking about God, the sovereign God, the ancient of days. He's talking about someone who come. Jeremiah is prophesying about the Messiah. When he will come, he will be called the Lord, our righteousness. We call him Lord. God that's another Bible verse. And one which is very, very powerful, Micha 5.2. But you, Bethlehem Ephrata, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of shall come unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel. So be ruler in Israel, out of Bethlehem. How Jesus orchestrated that he burst from Bethlehem. Dumb rabbi, understand the word. 
whose going forth and have been from of old, from everlasting. So that one who was born in Bethlehem, he was from everlasting. Oh, no. Don't you understand, Rabbi? Divinity of the Messiah is proof into your Bible, in the Torah. And you call the Christian our idol worshiper. Well, we'll go for your idol worship next time. Because I, uh, I don't want to make the video too long. Now we go for the last verse and I'll go. Psalm 2. That's an amazing part of the scripture of David. So we had Isaiah, we had Jeremiah, we had Micah, and now we have the book of Psalm. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, you are my son. You're the prince. We're going to inherit all the kingdom. You're my son today. I have become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nation your inheritance. The end of the earth your possession. And you will rule them with an iron specter. And you will dash them to pieces like the pottery. Brother and sister, when the Messiah will come, the second coming, you will not see that hippie Jesus who kiss and love and everyone. No. No. Review your life. He will come with an, a, a, a rule, with a, a scepter, iron scepter. It will be very, very critical about sin. And another verse we we'll read later, that the people come to him in Jerusalem with their gods, and they will go to God of Israel. Brother and sister, there will be other religion in the millennium, according to that Bible verse. But here is the thing is, the son, the father is talking to him. He will give him inheritance over all the earth and the possession, and he will rule into a scepter. So that does not show you uh, the divinity. We can go for more and more. Uh, so the Christ was born. The Messiah of the world came. That's the good news that the angel announced for not Christian only, for the Muslim to review their enmity with Christ because they have the halfway through understood. At least they don't call Jesus son of a whore and a sorcerer as the previous uh, into the Old Testament. Jesus said to him, I said, therefore, in John 8, this is a big story, we'll, we'll go into it in detail. Therefore, I said unto you that you shall die in your sins. And then he said again, for you, be, if you believe not that I am he. I want someone to repeat this. I am he. I am he. You shall die into your sins. Twice. You shall die into the sins. I am he. He is the Messiah king. He is the Messiah, the promise of God the Father. He is the king to rule over the world in righteousness, the scepter of righteousness and justice. God is just and he's going to show kingdom that never uh, fade away. So brother and sister, I'm just going to um, thank you for listening. I just don't want to have offense, but it's shame. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, close by this story. Years ago, I was interested to read a bit of Hebrew. And I Google, you know, and then suddenly in the middle of the night of 10 o'clock of Australia, phone call from Israel and telling me about about, you know, the lady, she wants to convince me to take the course with her. I can't believe my eyes. I can't believe my eyes. Mm. How are you, sweetheart? I Darling. think that's your voice. Is that my voice? Still big one. Mm, that's good. <laughs> come and preach with us. Oh, yes. We Definitely. come here every yes. fortnight. Every fortnight? Yeah, just a minute. I close and on. Okay. So the story here is that this lady was a Jew. She was trying to call me on the middle of the night, 10 o'clock, convince me to study the Hebrew. And I, when I was, and I never heard of Jews, you know, and I was amazed. I said, are you Jew? Are you real Jew? Are you worshiping God, the, the Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac? Amen. Isaac and Jacob? And the lady was silent. Do you believe in the Messiah? And the lady went silent. I said, wow, you missed him. And the lady froze on the other side of the world. They missed their Messiah. And they come in front of the wailing wall and insult the Christians and say we are idol worshippers. Our trinity is, is nothing and Jesus and they call him name. 
So brother and sister, I pray that the truth of God will hit you. And I pray that you read more of the Old Testament because Christians are so ignorant about everything. They cannot really go further from, you know, uh, uh, do you want Jesus? Yes, amen, and go and continue sinning. And this is, you know, that hippie of Jesus is not going to work for you. Christ wants elite children. Amen. He wants ex excellent children, superior quality of children. And, and the Bible, when it's going to be converted to other craziness, you will be shamed that you didn't read it. My, my brother uh, was sh showing me that they are translating in China now the Bible, the AI, the artificial intelligence is uh, writing the Bible for us. And this is the clip which was on the Christian news. They are saying about Jesus when he met the lady which is sinner. And no one condemned you. The lady said, no one. And Jesus answered him, we're all sinners. That's the translation that's going to be in your hands. That Jesus confessed that he's a sinner. Shame on us. If you don't preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he's the only salvation and the only place that we can rely on. So either Jews or you are a uh, Muslim or Christian, non-reading your Bible a week, because the time is so close and the Lord Jesus will show up in the air. God bless you all. And you too, darling. So how are you doing? 